Hey Sticks, what MMORPGs or heck even games do you play in your free time? You know what? That is a question I get asked all the time and surprisingly I have never really addressed that in a video before. I tend to talk about MMOs that I've enjoyed, MMOs that I recommend to players for them to try out if they're searching for something new, to satiate that thirst, to try out something they haven't before. Today I want to go a little deeper though. Today I would like to talk about what games, what MMOs, both, I play actively right now. Before I do though, Mrs. Stix and I have actually been streaming over on Twitch for the last two months. Come join us if you're interested in seeing us stream any of the games here over at twitch.tv forward slash MMObyte. We currently stream three times per week on Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, let's go ahead and jump into this. Final Fantasy XIV is one of my all-time favorite MMORPGs. I've been playing this game on and off ever since Heavensward first released years ago, and I have been at Endgame for every single expansion to date. Final Fantasy XIV isn't your traditional MMO though. This is a game that has a slow build up to something truly amazing. It has an incredibly deep, rich story that many players agree should be the standard for new MMOs. While its tab target combat is definitely a lot slower at early game than it is at late game, I can attest to enjoying it quite a bit. I am a fan of tab target combat and the plethora of abilities to utilize depending on the situation, combined with the on global cooldown and off the global cooldown skills makes for combat that often has you thinking ahead of time what you should be using. The game has a large, beautiful world to explore, although it does employ segregated zones which honestly are barely even noticeable the further you make it through the expansions. There's plenty of content to consume in the form of dungeons and raids and ultimate content, savage content, extreme content, and admittedly even PvP if you're in the small percentage of players that actually want to partake of it. Outward is a multiplayer cooperative survival RPG. But it isn't a survival game in the traditional sense, rather, the game employs survival-like features like hunger and thirst and stamina and a need for regular rest. This is a game that Mrs. Stix and I honestly did not think that we'd enjoy at all, but we're very interested in anything and everything co-op related and as such we opted to go ahead and give this game a try. The game uses a very interesting action combat system. It isn't fast, it isn't flashy, instead it's actually kind of slow, but it promotes and rewards the use of strategy. Instead of rapidly spamming your abilities, you instead have a small selection of skills that you can bind to your hotbar. This limitation fosters a sense of building a unique character, as opposed to every player having access to all 20 to 30 different skills. The game features incredibly large open zones with loading screens only between different regions, of which there are five total, I think, meaning that for the most part, you can freely traverse between the entire open world sense any kind of loading. Okay, I guess you actually do have to load into dungeons as well. But other than that, completely void of loading. There is so much to do in this game, forming epic gear, purchasing your home in each major city, tackling in game bosses, a plethora of dungeons, although multiplayer functionality is limited to only two players, which, you know, works for Mrs. Sticks and I, but could potentially be an issue for larger groups. I can see that happening. There have only been a handful, maybe less than a handful of third person shooter games that I would deem worth playing long term, especially with your wife and this is one of them. Strange Brigade is some of the most fun that I have probably ever had in a third person shooter, and I feel like Mrs. Sticks more or less agrees. You take on the role of a group of adventurers and a wise cracking narrator on a journey to stop evil from destroying the world, both in the main story and once again in the DLC. As this is a third person shooter, the majority of the combat is based around shooting. You have access to a wide selection of guns with quite a bit of customization for each and every weapon. You also have special abilities to equip that make up what's left of the non-shooting aspect of the combat. The game is completely chapter based, meaning that you take a mission from the overworld map, you're deployed, you make your way through a mostly linear yet beautifully crafted map that could take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half to complete per mission. This game is not only beautiful, but it has a lot of multiplayer features and promotes playing with up to four other people. There's also several different game modes, the traditional campaign, a horde mode, and a scored attack mode. All right, so this is actually more of a recent game that we've started playing, and it's both on stream and off. We figured, you know, since Smilegator working through launching the game globally, we take a look at it ahead of its launch. And I do actually have a Lost Ark video if you want to go ahead and check that out regarding the global launch of the game. But you know what? Surprisingly, we are really enjoying Lost Ark. 
It isn't what we're used to, and it is actually quite a departure from the norm for us. Lost Ark is an isometric action MMORPG. While I have played through my fair share of isometric MMOs, I have never played an isometric MMO that has kept our attention for this long. I mean, for the most part, Lost Ark is pretty traditional. It's a game that features pretty linear zones with portals leading to the next zone and the next quest hub, so in that sense, the game is fairly linear, at least from what we've experienced in our first 10 or so hours. The combat is very fast, the combat is very fluid, it looks beautiful, and the characters are incredibly responsive, more so than you would see in other titles in the genre. Like other isometric titles, you have your abilities bound to WSAD and other letters while you use your mouse to move. I know this can be a little bit irksome to some players, but that's what most games in the isometric genre do. There's quite a bit of story to the game, but the translation we're using is actually a little broken, and as such, it's difficult to really follow what's going on. As this is an MMO, there's a ton you can do in game. There are dungeons, there are raids, various types of PvP, you can sail the ocean in search of loot, and like, there, <laughs> there is honestly, I don't know, I, I hope to find out in a little more detail what the game really has to offer players as we're working our way through it. We're actually streaming this every week on Twitch though, so you know, come and join us if you're interested in seeing what the game's like. A fresh release announced at the PC Gaming Show 2020 was Among Trees. I was eager to play this particular game as soon as it became available on the Epic Store. A Steam release is expected 15 months after its release on the Epic Store. It encompassed all the things I love in Survival Sandbox. Exploration, survival, and deadly animals. Or at this particular stage in the game's alpha development, bears. The graphics and the calming music bring to the table an all-around beautiful experience while you struggle to survive. If you don't feel like struggling though, there is a Zen mode option that allows you to experience essentially camping in the wilderness without bears. But what fun is that? While there is no confirmed cooperative multiplayer experience planned, we can only hope it's a feature they consider somewhere down the line. If you want to see more on my adventures in the wilderness, go check out my channel. Borderlands 3 had a bit of a controversial release, I will admit. It launched onto the Epic Games Store before anywhere else, much to the dismay of the player base. However, now that it's on Steam, everyone loves the game and sings nothing but its praise. We played via the Epic Games Store and we had an absolute ton of fun. Borderlands 3 follows the epic conclusion to Borderlands 2, however, without Handsome Jack, which is probably the most depressing thing that I have ever had to experience in the entire gaming genre in my entire gaming career. Unlike most first person shooters, Borderlands 3 and all Borderlands games in the franchise is a looter shooter with enemies dropping hordes of new weapons, weapon crates and quests rewarding epic loot and well, I mean, uh, let's be real here guys. You run around killing things and looting everything that drops. That's the entire premise of the game. It also has a well fleshed out story with characters spanning the entire franchise being set years after the events of Borderlands 2, which is pretty sick, I will admit. Combat is what you'd expect. It's a third person shooter, so for the most part, you're blowing people out with a variety of guns, but you can melee too if you want to. You, you just don't really need to. The game world is also incredibly large, taking you to a wide array of beautifully crafted, unique worlds each with their own aesthetic look and feel, and you're never at a loss of things to do. As while they're releasing very regular DLC for the game, there are also several different game modes to play through, including additional difficulties. Now, this is probably the longest MMO that I have ever played. I began World of Warcraft back in 2008 during Wrath of the Lich King, and I have had an active subscription pretty much ever since, and have played during every patch and every expansion to date, with the exception being in Cataclysm and Warlords of Draenor. But I mean, you know, th there was a reason for that. I mean, heck, I even played for the majority of patches so far in Battle for Azeroth. And let me tell you, Battle for Azeroth is definitely something. But with Shadowlands right around the corner, Mrs. Stakes and I have once again jumped back into the world of WoW and are working our way through to get to a point where we can tackle the latest content and ready our for the Shadowlands pre-launch. World of Warcraft is a very basic, okay, well, it's not necessarily basic, but it's a very traditional MMO. It's set in a large open world that only has loading screens to enter dungeons, raids, battlegrounds, and arenas, and when traveling between continents. Otherwise, the zones are completely open, taking actual hours to run from one side of the continent to the other, and there are, uh, how many continents now? Six? We have Kalimdor, we have the Eastern Kingdoms, we have Northrend, we have Pandaria, 
we have Battle for, A wait, Draenor, Outlands, Battle for Azeroth regions. I okay, so I think there are seven now? Maybe eight? Man, I don't remember. While the game features a very disconnected story, if you're new to the game, the game still prides itself on its deep, lore-rich world and characters. It features what is probably some of the best tab target combat in a tab target MMO, with the only games that come close being Ion or Arcage. There's a ton to do as well. Battlegrounds and arenas for PvP, or you can turn war mode on for open world PvP. There are dungeons, heroic dungeons, mythic dungeons, mythic plus dungeons, raids, heroic raids, mythic raids, war fronts, and I, I kid you not, there's just so much to do in WoW these days. Left 4 Dead 2 is a four-player cooperative multiplayer first-person shooter. Honestly, Left 4 Dead 2 is probably the only kind of its game that we actually play. Typically, we tend to be drawn to games that have a sense of vertical progression, better gear, higher levels, skills to unlock. But this game, trying to survive the hordes of zombies while making it to the end of each chapter, really kept us pretty enthralled. Like, no joke, we no-lifed this game over the course of a week and were very bummed out when we finished it. At its core, it's a fairly linear game, while there's plenty to explore in each zone you move through, and many ways to go about making actual progress, there's only a single route that allows you to complete the chapter and the mission you're on. You can pick up a variety of different weapons over the course of the chapter you're on, and every map features more or less the same types of weaponry. Interestingly, there are plenty of melee weapons to equip and utilize, making for either first-person shooting or first-person hacking and slashing. There are tons of game modes that you can play through as well. The campaign, survival versus realism, realism versus scavenge and mutations. And with over 20,000 players playing concurrently within the last 24 hours, you can bet that this is a heavily populated game still. Have you ever dreamt of being the very best like no one ever was? Because in Temtem, you can actually do that. Temtem is an MMORPG that was released just this year and is one of a handful of monster capture MMOs that have released since the genre's inception. In Temtem, there are various large open islands floating in the sky, each housing a plethora of unique Temtem and dojos for players to conquer. Your job is to explore these giant floating islands, all the while leveling your Temtem and working your way through all the dojos, making your way to become the Pokemon Mast- uh, uh, the, the, the Temtem Master, I, I think. Okay, currently the game is in early access and the entire game isn't yet fully playable, but hopefully next year we're capable of not only pursuing that dream, but also achieving it. Combat is interesting, as much like Pokemon, the game is turn-based with each Temtem using an ability, with the faster Temtem going first and then the turn subsequently ending. While a lot of features are definitely planned in the future, right now the game allows you to play through the entirety of a cooperative with another player while seeing and interacting and even grouping up with thousands of other Temtem trainers out in the open world. The last game on this list is Remnant from the Ashes. If I recall, there was actually a large DLC released just recently, and they're in the process of developing and releasing their final DLC right now. Remnant is a third-person action shooter. It utilizes guns and bows equally as much as close proximity weaponry, providing a lot of interesting builds to pursue. While the game utilizes segregated zones with loading screens splitting them up, the game provides a lot of interaction with the zones you're exploring, providing countless buildings to enter, loot, explore, and kill enemies in. There are quite a few weapons, rings, accessories, and items to be found, so exploration is vital to your overall growth. There is a pretty good story that pushes you through the game, with new zones typically unlocking as a direct result of the need to progress. Each zone tends to end with a large boss fight, with some of them actually taking Mrs. Sticks and I hours to defeat. Like that freaking giant double moth fight. Holy, oh my god, man. We almost felt like quitting the game after spending hours on trying to fight those two things. While there are a couple of different game modes, I think the main replayability of the game comes in the form of new dungeons and new bosses, since you're not guaranteed to see all dungeons and all bosses in each playthrough of the game. And there you guys have it. These are the MMOs and the games that both Mrs. Sticks and I play in our spare time. These are the games that we have logged into over the course of the last 30 days, games that we continue to play both on stream and off stream. What about you guys though? What do you guys play? Let me know down in the comments below and let's talk about it. Anyway guys, that is it for Mrs. Sticks and I. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and we'll see you all next time. Peace. Someday soon I'm gonna make